Hello everybody, I'm Tom Dorsey. I'm with Brendan Ahern from Crane Shares today, and we're going to talk about China, which is really fantastic. I've been to China doing talks, and uh, I've had an interesting time there. That country is exploding. Uh, Brendan knows more about China than I will ever know, and Crane Shares are like the first ones who saw this coming, and you started putting together ETFs. Tell me about that, how you first got involved in it, because you guys are long-term. When I think about China, I think about you guys. Okay. Um, no, first of all, thank you for this opportunity to, to reconnect, Tom. I know it's been a number of years, and it's great to see you and see how well you're doing and uh, to revisit. Uh, still kicking. Still, still alive and you're vertical, <laughs> <I'm> vertical <laughs> which, which right. beats the alternative. Um, our, our founder, Jonathan Crane, first went to China in the early 2000s as an entrepreneur, built a business geared to the consumer. So, so living in China, building a successful business with several hundred employees across the country, he, he saw how China's economy was transitioning away from traditional economic drivers, uh, things like export-driven manufacturing, the dominance of energy, industrials, and materials to kind of new China thematics, really driven by rising domestic consumption, but it also saw how areas like internet and e-commerce were changing the behavior of Chinese consumers. I uh, saw the rise of healthcare, that as, as this urban middle class, you take care of yourself, you go visit doctors and hospitals. Uh, saw the necessity for clean energy. Um, and secondarily, he saw how China was opening up. Uh, that China, in terms of financial reforms, they've done a lot to open up access into the mainland markets. And China's mainland equity market is the second largest in the world. China's bond market is the single largest uh, bond market globally. But it's not been part of any indices because of a historical lack of access. And John saw how the, the door was coming ajar. And so we wanted to get ahead of that trend. So he ultimately sold his business to a global multinational, uh, moves back to uh, help raise his, raise his family here in the United States, gets off the plane in New York, can't believe how much exchange-traded funds have grown in his absence, but looks at the largest China ETF, and it's, it's all of where the composition from a sector perspective was all of where China's been, not to where it was going. Mm -hmm. it, it was all financials, energy, industrials, materials, and it was all only holding Chinese companies listed in Hong Kong. So no mainland access, no access into the US. Right. So John, cerebral guy, gentleman, um, studies the ETF industry for uh, two, two years, decides to create crane shares of, of you know, a China-focused ETF provider. Um, and in 2013, um, I, I got introduced to John. I had worked for Barclays Global Investors and BlackRock. So, so the only world I know is really this passive investing space, the ETF industry. Um, and so I quit my job um, to be part of building the company, helping to make John's vision investable. And uh, you know, we started the company with no clients, no assets, no brand. Um, and, and knock on wood, you know, we've, we've raised a few billion dollars today, um, really focused on providing a balanced perspective on Sounds what's like happening. Dorsey, right. Do <laughs> the right thing, and that's exactly what you all are doing. Um, you know, a good friend of mine, Jim Rogers, has said in the past, many years ago, that the 1800s was all about England. Mm -hmm. They were the power. Yep. The 1900s was all about the United States. This decade, it's China. There's no question about it. And you think about that, that's where uh, the growth is going to be. I, I went to China in Shanghai to do a talk yeah. one time. And it was kind of interesting because these were individual investors and they were having it translated. And I wasn't sure how the translation <laughs> right, was going. Right. And um, they typically don't have expression on their face yep. when they were sitting there. And I'm giving my presentation. I had 30 minutes to get them interested in my presentation in the afternoon. And uh, my presentation was all about modeling, which we can talk about in a, in a couple of minutes. And there was no interest I could see. Hmm. I said, oh, what am I going to do this afternoon for my two hours? I said, well, I'm just going to go on the uh, our on our website because we follow China. Yeah, yeah. And find trading ideas, and that perked them up. They loved it. Yeah. So, the interesting thing about that is Dorsey Wright has followed every country in the world. And mm -hmm. China is yeah. one of them. We've been there in China before you could even buy the A shares, we're following yeah. these countries. 
And that's because of my upbringing with my father, who was a career army officer. Hmm. And I lived all over the all over the world. Ah. I started first grade in Japan, middle school in Panama, went wow. to high school in Germany. Okay. So when Dorsey Wright started, I said, "Let's just uh, this is just numbers. It, it's that, that's all it is yeah. is price. Whether it's in Renimbi, whether it's in mm-hmm. uh, uh, Yuan, whether yeah, it's yeah, yeah. in uh, uh, who cares what price? Yep. It's price. Yep. So we've been following China for a very very long time, and now. I think you're bringing it to the forefront with exchange traded funds, which Dorsey Wright is one of the first ones mm-hmm. involved in exchange traded fund. In fact, yeah, I yeah. was involved in the very first exchange traded fund with the Philadelphia Stock Exchange. Hmm. So we've been yeah, in, yeah. we've been in this business for a long time. Yep. So you have a number of exchange traded funds. Mm-hmm. Tell me about what you have right now, because I went online and looked at all the things you have. Boy, they are they are very very interesting. So, you know, we are focused on this uh, rise of the urban consumer who consumes through their phone. Um, and so our flagship fund has been our uh, Crane Shares, uh, CSI, China Internet. So it's it holds the companies that are the transmission for domestic consumption as it happens online. So you've got this growing urban class that, you know, they, they don't carry a wallet. They carry a phone. Because because the things in a wallet you don't need in China today, uh, so things like cash, credit cards, ATM debit, you use mobile payments. So so KWeb owns a basket so of. They're ahead of us. They, they're they're light years ahead. I, I think last year in China there was um, there was something like. I think PayPal did 500 billion in mobile payments transactions in China. There's like 17 trillion. Well, you know uh, the story Jim Rogers tells. Yeah, yeah. Where he was in China and he was trying to buy an ice cream cone and he had cash. He had renminbi and the lady couldn't take it. I don't want cash. Uh, give me your phone. He didn't have it. So she finally gave him the ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had it where I was in um, in Beijing and I was going to, to do a meeting and uh, I got to the security desk. So it's 9 a.m. in Beijing and I, I pull out my wallet to, to get my ID out. And... Um, this woman runs up and says, you're Brendan. I was like, oh my gosh, like, how'd, how'd you know? And she's like, come on, it's 9 a.m. in Beijing. <laughs> you know, you're American in a suit. Like, you weren't hard to pick out. Uh, but she was like, it's because you pulled out a wallet. You know, the other reason is because you pulled out a wallet. And in China, you just need your smartphone. Everyone, everyone has their driver's license on, you know, in, in the back of their cell phone case. And she was like, you know, even my parents, my grandparents don't carry cash. It's all mobile payments. So... Uh, we're really excited, you know, with KWeb where it, it provides that very specific exposure. Uh, the second thing we've been really focused on is uh, this adoption of passive. And we want to own the securities being added to these indices. So, so going back to early 2014, we listed the first MSCI China A ETF, a KBA, and it holds the definition of Chinese A shares going into MSCI indices. Now, why, why is that important? Well, one, MSCI dictates how 14.8 trillion of active and passive assets. So, you know, you know the first book on every investor's bookshelf should obviously be uh, your book on point and figure. And then the second one on MSCI's global investable market indices, that, that those 201 pages dictate, controls, how all that money is invested. And so we spent a lot of time studying these index methodologies, and, but ultimately China is 32% of MSCI emerging markets today. Wow. Chinese A shares will be an additional 17% of their index. So, so China is already about a third of the index. In the next three to five years, it's gonna grow to over 40%. And, and so when you step back, you know, you know, China is just so much bigger than these other markets. I mean, even today, like right now, MSCI Emerging Markets has 1,200 stocks. 500 are China, Chinese companies. Wow. Brazil is the fifth largest country in China. 50 stocks, 55 stocks. China, China is 10 times numerically. India, right? Everyone want, you know, talks about India, Modi. In India, 78 stocks. Uh, South. Uh, I've spent some time in India. <laughs> uh, I've not been. I've not been. I'd, lo- I'd love to see it. I've, I've spent some time. You know, we, we've spent a lot of time in China. Taiwan, where, where I have been, is about 86 stocks. South Korea, the second largest country, 
is is 113 stocks. So 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 China is much much bigger than these other other markets. And so so as investors, there's a lot more China coming. And so we want to, you know, again, it goes back to our value add of providing a balanced perspective on what's happening there. And then I think what gets me excited is, is you, know, per, you know, working with your, the team uh, here at NASDAQ Dorsey Wright is that, you know, we've created these, these great ingredients and, and you've provided this great recipe. That's right? what we did with uh, First Trust. Yeah. With First Trust, when we had our First Trust Five, um, we simply took the uh, Alphadex way of fundamentally organizing sectors and First Trust gave those to us. Mm -hmm. And we took those right. and then did it the Dorsey right way, which is not AI, it's I. Right, right. It's just intelligence yeah, letting yeah, the yeah. computer do it rapidly. Yes. And we were able to build up five and a half billion dollars in that yeah, first yeah, trust yeah. five. All right, we're setting so, a high high bar time. Yeah, we're setting a high bar, but I think we can do that with China. I, I mean, people don't understand China yet. And with Crane, I I think you guys can do a phenomenal job in educating people on what's going on with China. Mm -hmm. What are yeah. some of the other ETFs you have? So, well, we've uh, we've taken our KWeb thesis and applied it to broader emerging markets. We have a fund KEMQ that is uh, consumer technology companies. That what's happening in in China in terms of this mobile phone adoption and how that is creating, you know, you're leapfrogging over big box retailers. It's happening online. That's happening in India. It's happening in Brazil. Um, so KEMQ applies KWeb thesis to broader EM. We have a healthcare, uh, China healthcare. We also did an EM healthcare. Do you know, do you know how much healthcare, the percentage of healthcare is in emerging markets? No. It's like 2%. Is that right? So, you know, you, you have no experience. I, th I think, you know, this is one, one, of, the, one of the great things um, that I think um, I've been thinking a lot about is, is people will say, say, you know, you know, S and P 500 since the March 9th low is up over 450 percent, but emerging markets is up not even 180. So EM is out of the favor, but we'd all agree we're in this great growth market, right? MSCI emerging market technology is up 480 percent since it's actually outperformed the S and P 500. But the problem is when you buy the blob, which is broad-based EM, what are you buying? You're buying 25% banks, another 20% in energy, industrials, materials. It's, it's a value play. Mm -hmm. And combined right. with a, with a you know, bear market, decade-long bear market in commodities. Right. So, so if, but it, tech within EM is less than 15%. But that's driving it. But that's what's driven it. That's what's driven it. So, so that's where you know, what we see with KWeb, uh, what's driving China are this domestic consumption in lawn, online and with KEMQ. So, so we want to provide these growth engines, right? We, we say, well, we're buying EM because of demographics, urban consumption. Uh, but you're buying a bunch of banks. How much, how fast can a bank grow? Two, three percent? Right. So, 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 so we're trying so to be a little smarter. Have you, have you sectored that part out and you run an ETF on that part? Yep, we have an EM healthcare. Uh, we have a China healthcare. Uh, we're also when I think of China healthcare, I think of somebody going into a pharmacy and getting some kind of a root, you know. Yeah, yeah, traditional Chinese medicine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Might be better. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, in fact, in Singapore there is a restaurant that you go in and they they do they check your pulse and they look at your tongue and whatnot, and the doctor that's doing this puts together your menu. <laughs> Uh, and here's what you're going to eat, yeah, and you yeah. give that to your uh, waiter, and the waiter comes back with your you don't know what you don't know what he said, but, <laughs> yeah. but it's everything you need. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, two parts roots, uh, <laughs> exactly. you know, bark. Exactly. Um, but Wouldn't yeah, be a fun restaurant to go to. It would. I'll hold, listen. I'll meet you there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Traditional Chinese medicine's big. Uh, farmers, you know, pharmaceuticals, and it, it, it just you know as people get richer. Um, you're able to spend more on, on healthcare. And that's, that's true for China. It's true for broader EM. We're focused on the uh, infrastructure plays due to the Belt and Road Initiative. What is that? So, so China has a very, very high savings rate. And that, that money's been invested in um, 
incredible infrastructure. Actually, actually uh, they're just opening their second international airport in Beijing yes. today. Um, so you take high-speed rail, but but great, you know, uh, telecommunications networks, you know, Wi-Fi in, in a major Chinese city is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. So, so China very smartly wa- uh, invested its savings. And that, that's driven a, a lot. A lot of, you know, here people say China, China's economic growth took off due to the WTO in, back in 01. That, that's partially true. But a bigger thing was 2001 was part of when China started building high-speed rail, s- incredible highways, Ports, um, you know, all the things to support economic trade was invested in China, and I think that's a big part of now what China is doing with Belt and Road is basically saying there are countries that are so poor there's no savings. You know, if you make you know yeah. GDP per capita in Bangladesh, the to consume is so high that you're gonna anything you earn is you, you're gonna eat. Right. And that's that. That is to some degree true for most of the EM world. And once a person, like in China, once you start making some money, you start buying more protein too. Exactly. Go right to buy more protein. One of the things I saw recently, and maybe you can expand on this, is the Silk Road. They've just put six trillion dollars in the Silk Road. So, so Belt and Road is about saying China has high savings; these other countries don't. So. And what does the other thing China have? Infrastructure know-how. Um, no one does infrastructure like China, right? So they're exporting that savings, exporting that infrastructure to countries that are too poor to do it themselves. Now, now Belt and Road has had you know some, but but we know as investors that if these infrastructure projects happen across the Silk Road, um, across Asia, Africa, Middle East. We want to own those companies. We want to own the construction companies that are going to win those deals, both Chinese as well as local. Um, so we built out a basket working with MSCI around the infrastructure plays, the energy companies, construction, and that's railway. An, an ETF, and that's an ETF. That's an ETF. O- OBOR. Oh. One Belt, One Road. Uh, it's one of the few ETFs we actually hold stocks in Kazakhstan. Um, why? Because Kazakhstan's along the Silk Road. I bought bonds in Kazakhstan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You like your yellow cake. Uh, well, I, I, I like that it's in U.S. dollars, and I have purchased uh, bonds there, and, they, and they've paid off. Yeah, I mean, Kazakhstan actually the, economically is doing fantastic. You mm-hmm. know, they've got incredible uranium deposits, and as part of going green is probably more, more nuclear energy. But being a, as a critical waypoint, uh, you know, China has run a train from London to uh, central China. Um, and so, you know, they're, you know, they want to create both maritime as well as by, by land, by the, across wow. the Silk Road. So I wonder what that train is like. It might be a pretty cool trip. Uh, I, I think it's, it would take you about like 60 days. Yeah. So I haven't quite signed on. Um, but, but yeah, they, uh, you know, they moved 50 containers. I took a train for 18 hours in India. Wow. I wouldn't want to sign off for that again. Well, you should do a Chinese train. <laughs> a Chinese train. In China, you can go from Beijing to Shanghai, which is like New York to Chicago in five hours. On the Amtrak, it takes you 18 hours. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so they, they're, you know, again, this is where, you know, if countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Africa, even in the Middle East, you know, they, 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 they're just, they haven't reached a level where they can afford to do this. And so, so China is exporting that. Now, what does China get out of this? More trade. More trade mm-hmm. for Chinese goods. It's, you know, it's a two-way road. Um, so China does have uh, economic benefit. They're, they're, China has said that they believe countries that are tight economically are more along to get along politically. Uh, which well, makes absolutely. perfect sense to me. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at Pakistan and India. I mean, they they're inextricably tied, and you know, you're not going to ever see a war between between those. It just can't happen. Right. There's too much technology that comes out exactly. of it. Exactly. Can't, can't afford that to happen. It's so interesting with China, and people don't understand it. What other ETFs have you got? So we we have. Um, um, we have done electric vehicles, so um, you know. Um, That's interesting. Electric vehicle. One of the top electric vehicles just lost twenty two percent the other. So day. Neo. Yes. Neo. And that's because the government subsidies are going away in twenty twenty. Tesla has the same thing here. If you 
people would buy Tesla's buy it because they get government subsidy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the subsidy away. Big problem. People be throwing rocks at it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, China, um, EV will be successful in China. Uh, the, the government had provided subsidies to let the industry, you know, give it a little bit of a jump start. But now they're saying, you know, free market, yep. uh, you got to be able to prove it. And NEO, unfortunately, uh, took a hit down 22%. Maybe. 22%. Even worse time, they canceled their earnings conference call. That's right. Exactly. Which is, uh, you know, kind of like Houston. Um, you know, we have a real problem. Uh, Tesla is building a, uh, a factory outside of Shanghai. We're headed there in a few weeks to check it out. Um, so I'm, I'm rooting for Tesla. I think it's an incredible car. I, I hope uh, once once I get my kids 529 funded, that's my uh, that's my. I just rode in one the other night. It's awesome. It's um, at the same time. This is a global phenomenon. That you know, even though when I sit at the JW Marriott in in um, Beijing next door is a Tesla dealer. But, but Tesla is a high price tag. And in China, there's a lot of companies trying to figure out how do you mass market it. Uh, but what we, what we believe this is a global phenomenon. Um, and I think, I think the, for, for how we approach building our cars as our ticker KARS is, is that this is an ecosystem win. That yeah, the, the auto manufacturers, you know, the big problem for Tesla is what happens when Volkswagen or GM decides to get serious about EV. Well, it's happening. It's it's happening. It's already happening. And that's the problem. Is you know, Tesla is almost like you know, it's tech guys trying to get into auto manufacturing. So what what happens when the the opposite happens, right? You know, Toyota uh, is working on a nitrogen car, Hyundai. Um, so, so, so we do think the auto manufacturers will benefit as they pivot to EV, less moving parts, higher margins. So, what's in your KARS? So we hold we hold the automakers, we hold the miners. So commodities will benefit: uh, lithium, copper. Mm -hmm. Right, you need these electro electrical right. lines. Right. Uh, but certainly, lithium will benefit cobalt. Uh, so we hold the miners. And then the technology companies. So, so to run run all these uh, sensors on a car, you're going to need a lot of a lot of semiconductor chips. You're going to need a lot of sensors. And so, cars is um, is I think a, a great way to play this trend in a very diversified manner. As much as I'm rooting for Tesla, you know, um, Elon Musk uh, has been a little eccentric at time. You've got a cash burn, and and I think people are putting way too many chips on Tesla. EV will survive. There's a little bit of a debate around Tesla. So, so you know, it's about diversification. As much as NEO, you know, on 60 Minutes, right? It hit 10 bucks a share right after that. It's down to two. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it just shows, you know, NEO might still be successful. You know, it's anyone's guess. I, I believe that EV will be successful. I don't know about NEO. Uh, BYD is a great, great company, obviously made famous by uh, Warren Buffett investing. You know, they make EV buses. Uh, they'll be successful. So, so we want the ecosystem because we think picking the winners is going to be that's tough. the one-stop shop. Yeah, K A R S. Correct. You've got some really cool stuff. One thing you're doing with Dorsey Wright, I really like this. Um, we're coming up with a model. Yep. And this is going to be very, very interesting. Tell me the stocks we're doing with it. So, so this is like this is kind of like the first trust. It's the first trust idea concept that we're doing with you. But it's really unique. I'm gonna let you tell. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. Um, you know, um, you know, it's it's been probably. Um, I mean, I first met met you and, and learned uh, point and figure 17 years ago at a broker institute here right. in Richmond. Um, so I've always been a big fan, and um, you know, I, I think you know, I've always I love that you provide a discipline, a philosophy. Uh, that that's with all the media too, particularly around China, right? The media is telling you, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know all this impending doom, and that that's you know part of that's because it's clickbait. Um, but but you know, ultimately the X's and O's don't lie, and so we actually had we had an advisor, a friend, Edmund, who said, you know, I love what you do, um, but I guess my business. It's it's hard for me to to track this, and he's like, you know what, you, you know, why don't you have the Dorsey Wright, you know, Crane Shares Focus Five? He's like, that's what I want, and so we were able to uh, reengage with you know Jay and Ian, uh, who are great stewards of, of your leadership, and um, you know we presented this idea of like, listen, we actually have someone asking for this, and so you know we'll have up and running in a few weeks a, a Crane Shares China Dorsey Wright model applying your 
uh, X's and O's, the point and figure methodology to our family. It'll have a ability to go to cash, right? As as you know, the relative strength falls off. You know, we'll pull pull those players off the field. But you'll pull them off the field, but you're going you're gonna to we'll, move the cash part you're going to move into is kind of unique. We're going to move it into our um, onshore bond fund, like uh, which is a like commercial that. paper. It's a money market commercial fund. Paper. That's beautiful because there's no question in my mind this is the future. Yep. When you look at models, the things that I do myself, I'm like Mikey. Give it to Mikey. He'll, he'll do anything. I mean, I use these models to manage my own money. Take, for instance, when you're thinking about a model, it's saying, okay, here's we have a methodology and a way of doing this that we accept, and we have done it for years and years and yep, years, yep. and it's relative strength. It's fourth grade division right, stuff. Right. Yeah. Your kids, I mean, they're probably past division. Yeah, yeah. And, but it's, it's compartmentalized, and when you, do, when you create these models, take, for instance, in Indonesia. I have run our Indonesian model for 10 years. Hmm. Now, the way I do it is my broker there is Juliana, and when our system tells me, sell this and buy this, I can't pronounce the names. Oh, right. <laughs> but it's all about price. Yeah, yeah. The system is looking at the price and whatnot and saying, you know what, this is, it's like a pitcher in a baseball game, yep. and here's what happens with the model that we're going to do with you. It's like a pitcher in a baseball game. He starts off pitching, and the next thing you know, by the fourth inning, he's walked too many people. He's hit the he's hit some batters with the balls. They've hit some home runs on him. And yeah, the yeah. coach goes out. You've all seen it. Goes out to the mound and says, "Hey, Bill, this isn't your day." Right, right. And he takes him off and he puts him in the in the dugout and brings in someone who's warmed right, up right, from right. yeah 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 from the bullpen. Yep. And that pitcher changes. That's exactly what happens here. Yeah, yeah. Is the relative strength begins to wane to a point where we can no longer leave that pitcher in right. and it's going to be replaced with yeah, yeah. another stock. Yeah. But if cash begins to get stronger in this and these the, the portfolio comes down to a point where we have to start moving cash in, right, right. that's beautiful. Like our first trust five with cash. Yep. That's exactly what the cash means. Yeah, yeah. That it's the fail safe, it's the it's the management part of the portfolio right, right. that automatically happens. Yeah. So when I was riding in a Tesla the other day, and I'm, I'm watching this operate, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this thing is just driving from uh, the Jefferson Hotel to where we were going okay. by itself. Uh -huh. And I'm looking at the computer, and I'm saying, this is the brokerage industry, this is the advisor industry, and it's automatically happening, and that's the way it's going to go right now. You can take these different models and bolt them on. Right, right, right bolt them together, and they're going to automatically run, and you'll be notified when a change takes place. And let's say Crane, which would be part of my portfolio, every portfolio that I own, I'm going to own some of the Crane model. Yeah, yeah. Because I understand how it works, I accept how it works, right, right. and it has that, has that um, I don't want to call it fail-safe, but it has a way of going to cash when you right, need right, right. it. Right, right, yes. So this is going to really be cool. I, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I, I'm... Um I obviously believe in our thesis enough that you know, um, you know, I quit my job to be part of building it, and you know, my colleagues have, uh, you know, John, John, and you know, believed in it so much that, uh, so you know, the thesis is there, you know, but, and, you know, we know the trajectory, but but there's going to be ups and downs, and I think this, you know, your methodology provides uh, a way to provide some discipline, to, to you know, rebalance, you know, take some cash, take some profits at yeah. times, or reinvest, you know, when that, you down below that 20% level and you get the reverse up from O's, you know, to come back in. And, and I exactly. think that's a, always been a great differentiator for the advisors that adopt your methodology. They have a discipline and, um, you know, we're emotionally, you know, we're programmed to, to you know, fight or flight. And so I think for a lot more advise, you know, the advisors who adopt your methodology benefit from that discipline to stick to the plan. And the advisor is part of the equation. Right. It's like driving a Tesla. You can't do it without someone sitting in the driver's seat. Right. He doesn't have to touch the wheel. He knows how right, it drives. Right. He knows what he did to put into the, com the coordinates of where we're going to go. Yeah, Tesla yeah. knows how to look at the street and, and follow those coordinates. But you got to have the, the advisor there who's going to bolt together these things in right. your portfolio. And I'm really thrilled with what you have coming on here. I'm getting the high sign okay. from, from, from our producer. Okay. But this is too interesting. I can't stop. I want to know more about what you have. Okay. I, in fact, 
we need to do something like this again. And I want to really hear all about crane shares and okay. what you're doing with China, because this is an important subject. Yeah. It's not being told out there. You're seeing all yeah, these yeah. things about the tariffs and this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. It's all people people read. But I've learned so many interesting things with you right now, just yeah. like electric cars. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to stop. Okay, right, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm here to stay. Uh, but And I'd love we'd love to bring you to China. You know, um, you know, we'd love to bring you there because seeing and experiencing, as, as you've had, to see what's happening there, um, it, it, it's, it's a trip, right? It's an experience, and uh, it, it changes one's perceptions. Where I was there, um, you know, not too long ago, and, you know, the view, you'd think, you know, um, you know life, life was going on just fine in Beijing. You know, restaurants were crowded, malls were full. You know, I'd look at Nike's earnings today. If it wasn't for, for China, Nike's earnings would have missed, but they beat. Uh, Chinese revenues from Nike were up 33%. Uh, 20, I'm sorry, 22%. EBIT was up 33%. You know, U.S. was, North America was up like 2 3%. Uh, so, so something is happening there, and we want to provide that perspective. I'll tell you what's happening. I was having dinner with this lady who was um, basically taking me around then, and I'm having this soup, and next thing I know, oh, my God. My mouth is numb, <laughs> and my mouth is numb. I'm thinking I'm having a stroke. Someone's going, I said, what happened? She said, Szechuan peppercorn. Oh. She said, we like to do that so that you, you, it numbs your mouth so we can eat things that are yes. hotter. So good Lord, I like hot stuff, but. Different, different level of. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, hopefully you didn't grab a glass of Muay Thai to, to <laughs> wash it down, because then you'd be in real trouble. Uh, well, anytime you want to take me to China, you let me know. All right, all right. But this is just the beginning because I want to do more of these. We need to learn more about what you're doing. I want to take more time, and uh, this needs to get viral. I mean, you guys are doing a phenomenal I job. I appreciate that. And you're the first ones in it. I love that. Yeah. Well, no, thank you, Tom, and it's great. it's great to see you fit and trim and in good health. And, um, you know, I've always been a big fan of you and your team, and I'm a big believer that um, it always flows from the top. And you've got an, a great team, and well, I think that you. speaks volumes to yourself. You're too kind. Thanks for coming. Thank, thank you, Tom. I enjoyed it.